Greetings, I'm John the Spirit, we've got a plan to complete, and welcome to Factorio Modded Super Shorts. Our plan for Simple Circuit Boards has been long in the making, but now I just have to actually do it. <laughs> and I'm going to do this as much as it sort of pains me in the form of something similar to a bus with lots of spaghetti. I just seem to pump a lot of coal around everywhere, so... I mean, everything else that's coming in is in pretty low amounts, but it's mostly just a lot of coal. So much coal. Thankfully, we pretty much have the coal set up already. As it stands, our destructive insulation column is very wasteful of space and doesn't really need to be here, so I'm going to do some movements. Especially since the products of this setup are going to be used all over the Simple Circuit 1 factory. I don't want to use too many of the splitters I literally cannot make right now, so I'm going to run these first two columns directly against the raw coal line I'll be bringing down here. As you can see, I've rebuilt the acetylene system up here using the coke directly. Now with the help of a few trusty underground belts, I can add a line of coke to our little bus. Here we have an immensely messy tin system. A full belt of coal will come up from the bottom here, fuel all of these furnaces which will make tin, and then it will come and fuel all of these fluid mining drills and these boilers. You may be wondering, Jonathan, how can this possibly be enough? Well, it is. Amazing. We now have coal running through the system and it will be delivered to all necessary areas. Back to the DDCs. Tar is used for many things in this system. Coal gas is used for almost nothing in this system. But this system does not produce enough tar for my needs, just on its own. However, there is a way to produce more tar using coal gas if we make syngas in a gasifier. Amazing. Not currently having a use for syngas, we will perform a whole tragedy and vent it into the atmosphere. Meanwhile, all that tasty, precious tar is going to join in the rest of our tar system. Doing what? You're gonna find out! We are going to make an enormous amount of aromatics with it. Incidentally, also carbon dioxide and flue gas, which we will vent. Meanwhile, the aromatics will take a long, long journey to the zinc ore mine right over here. A place that we will also need to supply with a lot of coal. Funnily enough, it is in our best interest to take the coal that I'm using for this tin mine and just bring it up to the zinc as well, which is going to take a lot of transport belts, so that's going to be a while. This was not as difficult a task as I expected. What may be a problem is finding a way to place 20 fluid mining drills on what I'm realizing is a very tiny patch. It's got lots of stuff in it. I managed it, thankfully, and I've threaded coal and aromatic pipes through this whole system. And you may even notice the aromatics there. What happened? I have powered up this whole system. So coal gas is going to these gasifiers and making me extra tar and syngas and ash. Unfortunately, the system does not like all that ash. It's like, why would you give this to me? Another system that really doesn't like all that ash is all these boilers. Thankfully, we have some need of ash, and we get one ash from every spent fuel. Lucky us, we're using up to 416 raw coal per minute for these boilers, which gives us a lot of ash. So we'll have all the ash we need for this system. And more. Um, significantly more. So much extra ash. The main use of ash is just for a ton of wood. For now, I'm going to mini-load it into a chest so that my system doesn't get too clogged up. The good news is, these inserters are fast enough to make my system run perfectly constantly. Lovely. Meanwhile, I'll be making up to two rich clay per second, which is an awful lot of rich clay per second that I don't know if I have space in my system for. I could use it all by turning it into stone brick to line my uh, factory with, I guess. But to get all that sand, I'd need to wash 300 soil per minute, which is 2.5 soil extractors, and do I really want to waste my power on that? I don't know. Like, obviously it will fit in this system. I mean, I could do it, but I'd also have to research it, and that would take a while. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. So this research isn't excessively far away, it's not bad, I could get there. I'll figure that out later. However, I also have to deal with this carbon dioxide. I will be making an absolutely enormous amount from this system, so it can power all on its own both my wood factory and my um, formica factory. And then there's so much extra of it that I need to vent it, which is why I'm researching fluid handling. However, to get the overflow valve I need simple circuit boards, and that's kind of what I'm working on right now, so anyway. For now, though, just to get zinc running, I'm going to vent it. You may be thinking, Jonathan, isn't it making a bit too much rich clay? More than my mechanical inserters can handle? That is A-OK, -okay, because the fluid mining drills only need half of what the destructive distillation column can handle anyway. This 15 number, it's really good. To save on splitters, I'll fuel these zinc furnaces with the coal line already passing beside them, and then add coal to the rest of the zinc system, and boom, we've got zinc cooking up. All the zinc needs to end up being used in a fairly complex recipe, so I do have to bring in all the way down, back in this direction. But that's okay, we'll be fine. I'll do that later, that's kind of a later step on the path anyway. We just need to get the zinc running. 
The destructive insulation columns got backed up on iron oxide, so I had to refuel that. I am reasonably certain that the furnaces will fuel themselves using the coal outputs of the destructive insulation columns, and in fact, that is the truth. Hooray for us. We'll have to extract that iron every now and then, but hopefully we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. It is a fairly reasonable amount of iron, um, but it's only 17.3 iron per minute, so, uh, or at least, uh, 17.3 divided by 2, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And by cross that bridge, I mean probably manually take out the iron, because I am lazy. Sorry, no, I couldn't bear at least putting the stone furnaces somewhere where I could extract the iron easily, and that somewhere is right here. Okay, so as of right now, it looks like there's no clogging, everything is going swimmingly, except that we have all this coke that I need to use somehow. Oh, and I guess I need to gas vent this carbon dioxide from here so that this unclogs as well, so I can have a settling for my lead farming. Lead farming, which, incidentally, needs some coal. Little enough coal, in fact, that I can finally use a splitter. That doesn't make any sense. I'm just gonna use the splitter to split off the last of this coal and bring it down to the lead mining. Conveniently, it is just enough for the coal, iron, and copper as well, although I'm not sure if I want to fully risk that. We'll figure it out. I'll set an output priority on the splitter so the coal mainly goes to the important places first. I mean, they're all important, but you know what I mean. With another loop around of coal, I have everything I need for the lead to run. This is just an increasing mess. With alloy smelting research, which incidentally gives us the ability to make duralumin, which we'll need eventually, we can research the crusher, and then after that, our concrete, which is going to take such an enormous amount of um, automation science facts that I don't even feel like it's worth it, but it's okay! Whenever you feel like you don't have enough of something, that must mean you need to make more of it. But you also don't want to overbuild, because that's kind of the killer, in fact, in Pyanodons. It wastes your time when you overbuild. And it could potentially be said that I'm overbuilding, but simple circuit boards are used for so many things that I think this is fine. And it gives me practice doing bus-related things, which I haven't had a lot of practice at. I'm really kind of a Factorio beginner, sort of-ish. Meanwhile, it's just really very vital that I get this coke used as soon as possible. But the stuff that needs it isn't ready until, like, the very end of Simple Circuit Board. So instead, why don't we get make use of our carbon dioxide and set up those farms we need? We already know what we need for our Moondrop farm. In fact, we've already basically created it, so we just need to move it over and give it the carbon dioxide that it deserves. I have now moved it right here. And it's already so heavily stockpiled that I just need to hook up two mechanical inserters and it will start running and making me that precious formaldehyde. For what? I don't remember. Oh wait, it's not even making formaldehyde, it's making methane. Close enough. I just need some of that tasty, tasty copper to make that formaldehyde. The other use for carbon dioxide is this wood factory. Obviously our current wood factory is very small and limited. Freshly research finished, let's get on concrete. Carbon dioxide did clog up here, but I can put a gas vent. The clever bit about the gas vent is that the way it vents is not every single carbon dioxide it gets, it just vents later. So it works temporarily as an overflow valve, because carbon will distribute to all sorts of things before it hits the gas vent. Though, just in case, I'm gonna put it right here. I might be slightly wrong about the overflow valve thing, but hopefully it fills these things up. Time to destroy another iron chest of ash. And another iron chest of ash. And with concrete finished, I can now make the stone brick recipe that I needed. This will have the convenient effect of making a lot of muddy sludge. Which I need for my incoming tree farm. Hooray! With the help of two and a half soil extractors and a washer, I can feed sand into this stone brick creator to use all my rich clay. Until I have my wood farm set up, I will vent the muddy sludge so that I can use up all that rich clay into that tasty, tasty stone brick. That should get my system running smoothly again once all this rich clay goes away. As far as I can tell, when this system is running at full capacity, this system will run at half capacity, which is all I needed to do. I just don't know if it's actually running at half capacity. I hope it is. Now for my tree farm. Five fastwood forest trees running on ash and tree seedlings should produce six wood processing units worth of wood. With an output priority on the right, wood through the splitter will come to the tree seeds first, which will join up with moss to add to these botanical nurseries and make tree seedlings. The moss does require some stone input. I have brought coal in a cute little loop-de-loop -loop from the lead mining station down to this little stone mining station, which means all I need to do is power these moss farms and provide them with muddy sludge and carbon dioxide. Muddy sludge production is mildly set back because... Rich clay production is mildly set back because... Car production is mildly set up because... Coke is just not being used fast enough, and will not be used fast enough until I'm actually making simple circuit boards. So sad. But with the help of some friendly small electric poles, I can now start making moss. It also didn't help that our iron furnace clogged up, exactly the thing it was not supposed to do. Once I get my iron line up, I'll blend all of these iron production systems into that. Moss and water are now feeding into the tree seedling producers. I just need to add a surplus of tree seeds. 
easy enough by shoving some wood into this assembly machine. With the help of 100 planner boxes, I do need to produce 100 tree mark ones so I can fill up all of these friendly password forest trees. But I can automate that process easily enough by plugging all of these two botanical nurseries into this one. I just need to make sure there is enough wood to power it for now. Tree seedlings will be placed onto one side of the belt that leads to the fastwood forestries. Ash will be placed on the other, and when it gets to the very end, put into a chest. Zinc production has backed up, which has caused my tar production to once again stop, so I'm loading all the zinc into a chest for now. And that should get everybody moving again. It would also help if I had actually completed the zinc ore line from up top here, as I now seem to be using the aromatics about half the time that I am able to produce them, which is exactly what I was hoping for. At that rate, we will of course have endless muddy sludge. Which fixes the moss production that was bottlenecking me a little bit. Stone brick filled faster than I thought, probably because this is a wooden chest and I could make it bigger if I wanted, but I just threw it all out outside. Still, I think storing stone brick will be my first use of a steel chest. I decided to change the ash system here a little bit so that the splitter takes ash only into the right side and tree seedlings will just stop rather than keep feeding into a chest. I wouldn't want them to do that anyway. Anyway, our tree farms are now running and making lots of logs and lots of wood, which will eventually clog up. With the stone line, I will also produce saline water on site. Saline water will eventually be useful for copper zinc batteries. At this point, I'm pretty sure I have all the basic materials I need to finish the production of simple circuit boards. What remains is for me to bring all of the metals together, and all of these resources I've just produced, and combine them into the final product. But that will be in the next episode. For now, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!